grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. And today as we begin to look once again at lockdown 2 and how that's going to impact and affect us, we return to recording our services and distributing them online. And so this service is for the second Sunday before Advent and hopefully all being well will be with you before 9 o'clock on Sunday the 15th of March. And so we begin. This is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. So we turn to our prayers of penance. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We sit or kneel to confess our sins. Together we say, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed is the Lord. For he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now, through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to new life in triumph. Make Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so to our reading. Now, reading comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves 
and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents. To another, two. To another, one. And the, each according to his ability. And then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. And I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you have handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. And so I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you have ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given. And they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. And as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, to a few thoughts on that rather harsh reading. Our gospel reading is all about talents. And many times that have been used to talk about talents or gifts, especially spiritual gifts. But let's consider for the moment the gospel. The talents are actually sums of cash. And it's thought to be around in today's money that a talent was equivalent to 300,000 pounds. So that man with the one talent had received a cash gift of 300,000 pounds. Not a small amount, I think you'll agree, for a servant to be given to look after. But more than just that, not just look after, but actually grow. And buy more than you would get if you were to deposit it in a bank. And I think we're all very well aware that at the moment, the amount that we get from banks is really not very much at all. So those servants who are given the five and the two talents have been given a huge amount of cash and are expected to look after it and make it work. 
And it appears that their master has earned his money from what may be considered as slightly unethical terms. Perhaps slightly dodgy. Not quite as clean legal as perhaps we would like. It is believed that he would loan money to those farmers whose crops had failed and so needed financial assistance to be able to get more seed to grow a new crop. Those loans were done at very high interest rates. So he literally did gather where he had not sown. And it also becomes quite clear that the master was not afraid to use strong hand tactics if he didn't think or feel that he was getting his just reward. He invested his money with those who were in need and charged large sums of interest to give himself a fat reward. That seems to be something that happens today as well. So perhaps this explains why that servant with just the one talent or 300,000 pounds cash is a mind cautious. And it tells us something about his character. Perhaps he's not someone who will go out and uh, charge high interest. He doesn't do any deals. He doesn't even go to the bank. Rather, he buries it in the ground to keep it safe, but he's not doing anything. How does that behaviour make you feel? I mean, often this, this, this parable is used to talk about how we as Christians are given gifts of the Spirit by God and how we should use those gifts. However, today I want to just consider it in a slightly more rounded manner. To start off with understanding that it is not just spiritual gifts. The talents can be seen as any gift that is given by God. And anything that God gives us is by nature or through grace. And it's not to particularly special people, but to us ordinary Christians, to you and to me. And those gifts are given freely. And it is God who decides who gets what and how much and when. And I think it's far more to do with what we ourselves can cope with at that time and what's going to help us to grow. And so God gives what we can cope with and what gives us that responsibility that we can then use to grow as we look to see how we can help God grow his kingdom here on earth. You see, the real trick is not just receiving the gift, but how we use the gift that we're given. They're not badges or medals that we can wear with pride They're to show off how special we are. How many times have you been asked questions by well-meaning Christians, such as, do you speak in tongues? Or have you received this gift of prophecy? It doesn't really work quite like that. And rather than being thinking of it as some badge of honour or merit, we need to think of it as that gift that is given to us. And it is for us to use those gifts in the right way for God. What we should always be looking to do, I think, is to use those gifts, those gifts that we've been given by God, to help bring God's kingdom into being here on earth. So we should be on the lookout for where, to whom, into whatever situation that we are placed, that we can bring those gifts in to use. 
Our goal should always be on growing God's kingdom, to bring God's love to those who have need. And if we use the gifts to further God's love to those around us, I think we will find that God will then give us more. We will move from the one talent to the two, to the three, to the five, to the many, many more. We have been given gifts, and God expects us to use those gifts. In fact, it is our responsibility to do so. And therefore, rather than hiding that gift, like that one servant did by digging a hole and burying it, rather we should be using the gifts fully, as God gives us that strength, that energy, that opportunity to do so. Not in some underhand way, but openly and fully to bring glory to God and to grow his kingdom here on earth. Amen. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let us declare our faith in God. And so gathered as God's people, let us pray, and we sit on the And the response to Christ will come again is, make us ready to meet him. Christ will come again. Make, make us, us ready to meet him. Holy God, if we are presuming on your mercy, alert us and shatter our complacency. If we are doubting your mercy, affirm in us the reality of your forgiveness. May we, as the Church, encourage and warn, but never condemn. Acknowledge sin, but never judge. Christ will come again. Make, Make us ready, ready to meet him. Holy God, raise up prophets to speak out your truth and draw attention to whatever needs changing in our world, our expectations and assumptions, our management of resources and finances, our systems of government and our attitudes. May all people come to recognize your truth. Christ will come again. Make us ready to meet him. Holy God, fill our homes and places of work with so much love that tensions and barriers melt away, conflicts are resolved, and troubles lightened by being lovingly shared. Open our hearts to hope again where we had given up. Christ will come again. Make us ready to meet him. Holy God, may all in misery and despair turn to find you close beside them in their heartache, not condemning, but loving them in their pain. May all who are locked in terror or guilt be set free, and may those who long-term illness will be strengthened to persevere, free from risk. Christ will come again. Make, Make us ready, ready to meet him. Holy God, Lord of the living and the dead, we commend to your mercy all who have died and thank you for that eternal healing which frees us from all pain and suffering. 
Christ will come again. Make us ready to meet him. Holy Lord, we thank you for the gifts and talents you have given us. Give us the courage to use them for the good of the world. And the collect for today, the second Sunday before that. Holy Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so to our closing prayer. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, accompany us in this day's journey. Dawn on our darkness, Open our eyes to praise you for your creation and to see the work you set before us today. So take us and use us to bring to others the new life you gave in Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.